Killer. Well, um, hey, we'll go. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have we have a great crowd here today. Um, some new folks that haven't been here before. Obviously, I'm Eric, um, and I'm really thankful and grateful you're here. This is a great group. Uh, the The gist of this, if you haven't done one before, is we usually just kind of open it up, have some really great discussions, hit on some topics, see where they go, uh, and then we take your ideas and you guys jump in and drop knowledge. Um, just really quickly, I'll just do it. I'll do a super fast uh, as opposed to, um, and then we'll have everybody can kind of say hi and introduce themselves really quick. But um, Lenny is here from Florida again. He's been really a great contributor the last couple of weeks. Hi, Lenny. I finally took a look at your stuff. It looks awesome. Uh, Andrea has a killer um, podcast that she runs um, that we'll make sure we share. And I'm sure she'll talk about a little bit today. Jana's become a really good friend. She recently moved to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but she also helped out our local chapter of Seattle of MTNA completely rebuild a new website. So she was uh, who we ended up going. I'm the president of that chapter. Jan and I got to know each other through that. So her company, Studio Rocket, is awesome. And uh, we've gotten to know each other. Micah's on our customer success team. And you, if you've ever talked to her, you know she's incredible. And Josh is a brand new friend um, who's a guitar teacher who just had his picture on the front page of his local newspaper today. Dude's just kind of winning at life right now. Um, and then Steve uh, is a um, expert in the mobile online uh, world of piano pedagogy. So, um, oh, and there's Nathaniel from Customer Success. Well, we have, we have a party here today. So uh, anyway, um, welcome everybody. Oh, and then there's Steve. Wow, this is our, this is our biggest crew yet. So uh, hi, Steve. Uh, Steve's a fellow Seattle musician, uh, faculty member, um, jazz wizard extraordinaire. So this, this should be a really good conversation. Hi, Steve. How are you, man? Good. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Well, I'm really grateful that you guys are all here. Uh, I'm looking forward to what we have to talk about today. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd jump off today's conversation with, I made a post earlier this week about this idea of talking to yourself of 10 or 15 years ago. And the conversation was so amazing that uh, ensued from that. And it really got my wheel spinning. I was so motivated and so uh, appreciative of what everyone had to say um, because there was some really authentic and great advice from like as, from avoiding difficult things in life to making different decisions. Health seemed like a really big one, right? Which is like, gosh, we all, we all know that. Um, but then, you know, I've been doing that. I got really stoked on that. And last week in our mastermind, Lenny brought up this great concept about uh, vision and vision building and this great exercise for doing that, that he's got a blog post that Lenny, you should share so we can, we can all take a look at. Um, and looking forward 15 years, right? To imagining what the you of 15 years from now would want to tell the you of today. Um, and that's become an awesome exercise which is that I've, and our family, we've been doing this thing of like 15 year ago, today Eric talking to 15 year ago, Eric knew exactly kind of what to say, which is like, wow, things are gonna get intense, blah, blah, blah. You know, basically pretty good job though. But 15 years from now, Eric, talking to today, Eric, it was actually a lot easier to come up with things that I'd probably wanna tell myself, which is like, don't defer the things you wanna do in your life, like travel, spending time with your kids, uh, get healthy now, you know, and and really prioritize that. And it's really easy to look ahead and look back. So I was wondering, I thought maybe we'd kind of just jump off our conversation today on sharing a little about maybe what you guys have. Like if you think in a big scale, 10, 15 years, some ideas uh, that you might want to share, you know, if you've just made a big move, if you're getting ready to make a big move. Um, and then I wanted to to jump this conversation into something that uh, I feel like I've had a lot of great experience with in the last couple of years, which is conflict and conflict resolution, right? Which has become, it's something I'm actually, I see as a great opportunity to build relationships. And uh, many of my closest friends have, be, or friendships have begun as, uh, you know, less than, as, as a conflict. Um, so I wanted to share some thoughts uh, for the second half about conflict, conflict resolution, some ideas you guys might use to have a plan in your businesses for how you deal with it and how we can see it as an opportunity. And then I thought maybe at the end we could just kind of share a little bit what we're working on. Um, so would anybody like to uh, talk a little about their 
long-term 10, 15 year plan and just kind of just jump in and start a conversation? Steve? Oh, okay. Hold yeah, on for me. There you go. Okay. I think I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, there was a prompt from one of my teachers. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Had a, a, a similar exercise, kind of imagining more artistically, like what's the, it was called ideal music under perfect circumstances. So it's thinking about, I think it was, yeah, 10 years from now, you know, the future version of you, if you were playing, you know, if money was no barrier, like what kind of music would you be playing? What would it sound like? Where are you? Who is there? What's the connection? And imagine this vividly. It's like a journaling thing. And then part of it later on at the end was like, okay, well, what's keeping you from doing this now? And part of it was like, oh, actually, what, what is it? Sort of thinking instead of necessarily putting these things off as like a huge goal to throw down the line there's so many pieces of it we can start implementing implementing now um and yeah looking down the line um looking at you know just continuing to build <clears throat> body of work as an artist as a saxophonist and you know build what i'm doing in the world of teaching improvisation and workshops and i'd love to do make it sustainable to even do more traveling i mean not being on the road but you know, there's been some instances where I get to travel somewhere really cool, like Hawaii early this year and be able to bring, it was viable to bring my family, you know, to sort of tie in, you know, seeing more of the world with, um, yeah, with the, the business and the art that I'm doing now. So that's, um, yeah, that's what comes to mind. Hey, Steve, do me a yeah. favor. So everybody, you know, uh, I would highly encourage, I mean, I love what you said, this ideal music under perfect circumstances, yeah. like, and if money were no option, but... Or, or no object. Uh, everyone here should be on Steve's mailing list if you're not, right? right. Um, and should know about the game symphony workshops you do um, and have heard the album you dropped last year. Uh, so, you know, please share that, man, because I mean, it, it's such good work and your email list is so awesome about pedagogy and creative practices and ideas. Uh, I know I know you're on an awesome path. So yeah. please share, share that because I think I don't think everybody here is on it or has heard of it yet, but I, cool. I, I love yeah, getting drop that in the chat. That, thanks, man. Thanks for your kind words. Yeah, man. Cool. Jana, what about you? You just, you just moved to a whole new city. You're under a major life change. Corey's about to move to a whole new city. So how, how, how's the transition? Hi, Corey. How's the transition going? Uh, it's a big one. Um, it's going, it's going well, and it's also hard, both things. Um, uh, a studio parent of mine last year actually emailed me after we moved. I, well, I'd emailed her about something and she responded and said, um, just so you know, when we moved from Colorado to North Carolina, where we had been living and where I knew her from, she said, our whole first year was so incredibly difficult. She said, um, even though we moved to be close to family, which is exactly what we just did, um, she said it was really isolating and just incredibly challenging to get used to a whole new place. And we just, we felt really disconnected and, and a little bit displaced. And then at the year mark, everything kind of clicked and fell into place and we felt at home. And she said, so just hang in there. And I, I forgot about her email until just recently. And it came to mind and I realized, wow, it's so true. Just the I think the process of making a new place your home, getting to know someplace and trying to find where you fit in that. And I think even more so for entrepreneurs, because um, unless you're working in an office with, you know, surrounded with other people, it's already a little bit separated from, you know, the rest of the world. Uh, and so, so it's been really challenging to sort of feel at home here and, and to find where we fit. We really love our home. We love the new city where, you know, we love being your family. It's fantastic. But it is a huge change. And then we started our a, a new business um, in September, we launched. And so this whole past year has just been new, new, new. And there are days where it's just a matter of like taking the next task and applying all of our energy to that. Um, and then when we zoom out, we have to zoom out much bigger than just where we are in this month or in this year. Um, so it's really, it's, it's a very exciting challenge and one that we have been wanting for a while. And it's also, um, it's taking time for sure. So we will have been here a year this summer and, um, 
we're, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that year mark. <laughs> hey, Jana, can you, can you tell us really quickly about your new business? Is this to do with Studio Rocket or is this? Uh... No, no, this is completely different. So um, I had a, a, so I'm a piano teacher, a longtime piano teacher, and I um, moved to group teaching several years ago and loved that. And um, I moved into working with groups of little ones and their parents and I called my program Piano Stars, and I had, uh, I think, three classes going at a time, and I kind of created the, the curriculum myself, and um, it was really popular. And when I got ready to move, I thought, how could I, like, I can't, I can't really do online lessons with these kids. They're, they're too young. They're, you know, four to six-year-old, um, and they were, you know, not really, were just beginning to play the piano, so it just wasn't feasible. And so I thought, I wonder if there's a way that I could sort of take this program online. And so I did that, I created um, a lesson series of videos. And so it's a subscription-based model where parents sign up, they pay a monthly fee, and then they have access to our library of lesson videos. And I sit at the piano and I teach, um, I teach little ones basically not how to play the piano. We don't dive into technique, but I encourage them to explore the piano. I, I encourage them to explore their musical voice and grow confident in expressing themselves. I do a lot of overhead teaching. I, I teach pieces by rote so they can just kind of get a feel for what it's like to, to play something that sounds familiar. Um, and it's for the parent and the child to do together, which is what makes it possible at that age to teach online. Hey, Jana, how, how, how did you launch that? Can you tell us how you launched it and or is it launched yet? And in uh, and, and what platform did you choose to put your materials on? So we built our website on Squarespace, which is where we build all of our websites. Oh, OK. Um, I use Memberspace to manage the subscription end. And so I upload all of my content links. I have supplemental materials, worksheets that are printable. Um, and then the videos all kind of live on Squarespace. So they're protected by Squarespace. Uh, I'm sorry, by Memberspace. <laughs> OK. And, um, and so that's how then parrots have access to our portal. Um, the Pianosaur, the business is called Pianosaur, and so the Pianosaur Hub, um, they have access to through their membership with member space. Is there somewhere we could see that? You know, that's something I've always been really interested in is like how to do that, that, yeah. you know, the paywall, the, and, and I'm sure, you know, so Jana, her backstory is they run Studio Rocket, which they build websites. Traditionally, they did it for um, music teachers. Um, and now they're, they're obviously branching out because um, her part, her husband is a, he's a developer, right? And, and you're kind of like the, the out facing business of it and the piano teacher with the industry experience. And it's a really special combo because you guys are able to really understand the students, the teachers, what they need. And um, it's really do awesome stuff. I'll actually, I'll, I'll post the link to the new uh, Seattle Music Teachers Association website, which was such a delight to work together. Made, made the whole made the whole crew so happy. They were all so pumped. Yeah. So glad. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad your first year is nearly over. And it's, uh, I think that the, the thing I heard you saying most, and I kind of took from what you just said is patience, right? Which is like, that's the thing. When I look at my future and I look back and I look where I am now and I look back, I'm like, gosh, man, patience is such a, a such a virtue, right? And um, sometimes in life, we just have to just wait and just live and get through these awkward or difficult or trying times with patience. So it sounds like that's you've, you've been a patient person. How many people have made a significant life move in the last 36 months or two years? I thought so. I, I think I was like, because I remember I talked to Andrea when she was pregnant and moving right at the same time that's what we first met which i was like wow that's heroic Corey's about to move lenny you just moved right steve you just moved Jana just moved steve you just moved josh if you move i think you and i are the only ones that haven't moved in the last but you had a baby so that that counts double I had a baby last may but i moved like a year ago basically <laughs> dude this is a this is a band of adventurers and vagabonds wow look at us look at this this is amazing <laughs> Uh, hey, Steve, since you're, um, or Steve Hughes, uh, since you're a new guy, do you want to just tell a little bit about what you do um, since you haven't been here before and kind of your backstory? And um, so I would say, uh, it's, uh, actually, tomorrow's my year oh, wow. of uh, the year date of moving in. So um, it's a great time to reflect, and it's really interesting to 
to hear her story. Um, and you know, it's like, well, I've been there. I'm kind of a little bit further down the road, but at the same time, I feel like I'm in this transition process, huge transition process. Um, anyways, so I'm a piano instructor and, um, I went to school for music for piano performance. Um, I have a jazz and classical background. I also in my twenties played with a lot of cover bands at the corporate circuit. And then I, I kind of was a late starter with uh, my teaching career. I started when I was, uh, I think about 28, I got hired by a studio and then like, it just, I just fell in love. It was just an instant thing. And then I put all my passion and pursuit into teaching, um, went to workshops constantly, researched, went to classes and just like put all my energy into it um, and found that, uh, you know, everyone has that moment, hopefully where they find their true calling. So, um, and then I also have another thing that I've been, I guess, kind of good at, but I never really pursued it professionally, which is just, uh, you know, using technology and incorporating it. I just always just had a knack for that. Um, I used to work for Brooke Mays corporate a long time ago and I was like their specialist in technology at the age of 20. It was like my first job. And so, uh, it was kind of a, it was a really cool thing, a really new thing back then. I worked with, you know, um, I learned, but uh, basically like MIDI applications and, and I taught teachers at conferences, how to do things. I was, you know, doing that at 2021, 20, going to conferences and, uh, being a representative. So that was like a long time ago. And then like, I've acquired all this gear over the last 20 years. And so like, I have all this stuff and then I just started one day, I guess, just started using it more in my teaching. And then of course the iPad and that whole thing. And so, um, at some point our family, I know I'm kind of fast forward, decided to move. And basically we wanted to get out of a neighborhood. We wanted to have freedom. We wanted to live in a place where we had land. And when you make a decision like that, there's so many factors. It's so difficult just to even get to the decision point. Um, so, but you know, when we decided to, to come here, which is just a little bit east of Austin, um, we decided that, um, you know, I was going to have to, I, I'm the main provider for my family, family of four. Wow. And so I had a full blown studio for about 10 years, um, you know, a waiting list and it was going really, really well, uh, teaching in, uh, in Dallas. Uh, and so when I moved, I had to basically, you know, I had to convince the families that we were going to move online and, uh, this is actually a great thing. And so there was probably like a, I went through a, about a process of a year of researching and getting to the point where I could be really confident about doing it and talking to the families. And then I didn't even think about pursuing really doing full-time online lessons because I wanted to do more of a subscription model. I wanted to do more passive income type stuff. And so, which I'm kind of currently working on now, but what happened was my, I, it went so well that I was like, I can actually do this full time. Wow. You know, um, cause I had a church gig, you know, I, and I also was still doing corporate, uh, performances, you know, just supplemental things. And, um, when I was able to get rid of that Sunday morning gig and able to not, not cause I can't even do these gigs anymore because traveling to Austin is impossible. Um, so now I have the freedom to be able to build something and continue to build it without having to worry about all these other things that I needed to do prior. Um, anyways, so where I am at right now is I have a, um, a business where I am teaching all of my students remotely. Um, I also have a business where I am, uh, teaching other teachers, uh, about technology and using that in their studio and helping them, um, be their coach, their mentor. And so that's kind of my two primary, um, uh, two pr primary jobs at this point. And I, and I'm also in the process of trying to finish a website via WordPress, like this whole year, I'm trying to learn to do it because I like to do everything myself. <laughs> hey, it's, it's Steven, that's, anyways. dude, that's an amazing, uh, I didn't, I didn't know all that about yourself and a, that's awesome. But man, I, I just was, I sketched out a bunch of questions that I would love to ask you at another time. Okay. Uh, 
first off, you know, it would be really cool to get on a, uh, a chat with you and Jana sometime about, because Jana just went through this with me and knows it really closely, is that, you know, the teaching teachers about technology is so, and you know, as my, and my role at the, at, with MTNA, you know, our average, um, our average member in our, in our Seattle chapter, which is one of the most youthful chapters in the United States, is 53, um, very technologically adverse. I'm sure, Andrea, you know this too, and, and you see it a lot. And if there's a way, you know, to be like, what is the, where's the starting? If you've thought about where do you start? What's the, uh, what's the most simple way to kind of <clears throat> move into that space and understand it? What's the best setup? That would be an awesome conversation one week because I think, you know, I, it's something I end up talking about pretty much at every general meeting. Um, and you've probably parsed that thing out with your experience to be like, well, we're, this is the point of entry that makes the most sense. Is it an, is it an iPad? Is it a laptop? So that's awesome. I knew you, I knew you were helping other people um, get their setups. Your studio is beautiful, man. Um, I, it sounds like you're through your first year and uh, hopefully the, the change was good. But that's an awesome backdrop you have to teach in. Can I, let me ask you one more question. Um, how, what was your retention like when you went to All Online? When you left Dallas, I mean, did you yeah. keep half of them? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, 75%, somewhere around there. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, well, it was a necessity. <laughs> is, you know, is your cost of living that, lower? You know, some the, the things that you do and the, how your plans evolve sometimes are born out of necessity. And uh, so you put all your energy into that to make sure it happens. I, people, I had people that, a lot of people that doubted that I could do it. Um, but then I also knew a few colleagues that were able to make it happen. So, uh, you know, that game, you know, I never lacked confidence with it, but it was more of like doing everything I could to get all the negative part of it out and to make it to where there's no doubt that it's going to be a good decision for the parent and the student to, to transition. Most of the students I lost, um, had parents that were very, um, they really wanted, um, they didn't want technology to be part of piano lessons in that way. It kind of a cultural thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I lost some good students in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, um, I was still fortunate. Yeah. Cause it, you still have the, the human element to it. That's the thing about like the online lessons. It's still a person when meaning you're still getting like the, the, the intangibles, like the guidance, the life ideas, the, ability to see if a, if a student is like going through a hard time and needs to talk about something, um, you know, and you get, and that can all be done now. Are you, do you, let me just, do you use zoom? Is that your platform of choice? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I really like zoom just because the flexibility and, um, it does stereo recording, uh, or, you know, uh, produces stereo audio. The other platforms don't do that. Um, if you use like an audio interface to do your um, your lessons, you definitely can tell the difference in the quality. That, yeah, that was the main main decision. Yeah, I we we are constantly testing all the platforms because we do so much video chatting, and Zoom wins every time. Yeah, you know they're yeah. It seems like they're really they're kind of ahead of the game. Well, hey, thank you for sharing that. Should we should we get to the meat of things, Andrea? Tell us how you're doing really quick. What's going on over there? I'm gonna put you on the spot for just a second. Something about the way you shook your head made me just want to call you out a little. What's how are you? What's up? Okay, I've got a new computer set up, so I'm still thinking things. Um, well, I just like so resonated with what Dan was saying because there's so much when you're in a transition like that and moving and things you don't appreciate, like the time it takes to find new doctors and switch all your auto bill pay to new utility companies and find a new shelf to like make stuff fit in your kitchen and like there's like so much time spent getting your life back to just normal and not even not even like maybe four but just a camp today so yeah for i mean everyone's made for the last year but like, like yeah that can really drag you down um and just on that topic of the like what would you say to yourself five ten fifteen years in the future uh, I finally found myself, especially like right after my son was born, being like, okay, if I were to do this again, I would, and like thinking of ways I would make, would have handled it differently. Like I would give myself more than six days of <laughs> or, you know, like all these things. And I thought, why am I expecting future me 
to be nicer to future me than present me is being nice to present me. <laughs> and I just thought, I'm not going to wait to give myself grace until I have another child, or I move again, or I start another business. Like, I'm going to give myself grace now for the hard position that I'm in today instead of waiting. So, I don't know. That was just kind of something I have been reminding myself of on a daily basis. Like, I don't have to wait to be kind myself. <laughs> Andrew, that is, I'm so glad I, I, I begged you there. That is a beautiful thought. Yes, I'm, and I bet we can all relate to that in that grind of just like through life. I mean, there's it's so interesting. We jumped on this call and all of you have a very similar situation going on, an underlying uh, uh, energy that you guys are living through, which is like change and transition and big stuff. And uh, wow, what what cooler thing than to be cool to yourself, right? Which I think... You know, we, it's, it's a hard thing to learn how to do is yeah. to, so th thank you for sharing that. Sure. So, so speaking of that, um, what I, what I wanted to jump into, and I think I'm sure, uh, as, as kind of a, just a, another jumping off point is this idea of conflict, right. And resolution. And, uh, I mean, you guys have all probably ex experienced quite a bit of this in some aspect of your life. Uh, but what I want to do is, is talk about just as far as like as a business practice. Um, and it's something that like I'm just really aware of because I'm really uh, I'm someone that I really stress out about it. Right. And uh, over, it's taken over the years. I've really practiced how I deal with conflict and how uh, to give and receive criticism. I mean, as a musician, you're going to get it anyway. Um, and, you know, my wife is an actor. And, you know, and I, uh, I, I feel like, oh, wow, being a musician has really put me into a space where I'm comfortable with being rejected. Um, and she and then you, you're married to an actor. Oh, my gosh. She gets so much rejection. And she's like, you know, she's lucky to close maybe 10 to 20 percent of her auditions. And they're just brutal. Like you go into an audition for like a Microsoft ad and they just take like one look at you and you're just like, you're out. And um so she's really, she's really taught me a lot about that too. But, you know, I think that, uh, so, you know, this, the traditional model of just like, oh, just thick, it's thick skin, toughen up, you know, blotty blob, what, you know, uh, is, is kind of dated. And I really was hoping that we could discuss this idea of, you know, disagreement or conflict, um, and create a, a preparation for it, which is what I've done. Uh, that's really helped me a lot because, I've learned that conflict comes in two styles. You either know it's coming or you don't, right? And um, either one can blind can blindside you. Uh, and w just like when you're performing uh, or you're in a different space other than where you're comfortable and relaxed, we act different and we say things differently um, than maybe we would have liked to say. I'm sure we've all looked back and been like, oh, I wish I would have worded that different or I wish I wouldn't have been so emotional. I'm just going to tell you guys this quick story. I was getting ready to get married. It's, I'm not proud of this story at all, but in our family, we refer to this as, as the great tofu incident. Um, you know, uh, in that I was, it was the day before uh, my wedding and my wife and I were stuck in traffic on the way to uh, go meet with, with, with the pastor that was going to marry us to go through our vows. And we were stuck on Denny going by what's now uh, Cornish for you guys that live in Seattle. You might, Steve might know what I'm talking about. And, uh, my wife had picked me up from work. At that time, I was doing marketing for the Seattle Opera. And we were, um, we were heading down Denny and she made me this, she was driving and she made me this amazing kind of soba noodle bowl with a bit with tofu. You know, we're like Seattle folks of the early 2000s doing our deal. And uh, we're totally stuck in traffic and this car cuts us off. And my wife and I are fighting about the wedding because her in-laws are coming in, my in-laws are coming in. Typical day before the wedding thing. And, I just reached into the back and, and I reached into, it was hot, it was like summertime, it was July. I reached into this bowl and I grabbed this thing of tofu and I just went out the window and I just chuck it. And it splattered all over the car in front of us. Uh, and this is a life defining moment. We weren't moving anywhere. Like I took a handful, it's, what more Seattle aggressive thing can you do than take a handful of tofu and throw it on a Toyota Tercel in front of you that's full of people by the way. And I was immediately like, oh my gosh, I'm so mortified. Like they were probably, I want, I was like, do I go apologize? And we, we laugh about it now, but it was, it was a life-changing moment for me where I was like, man, 
what a ridiculous way to act in a moment of, you know, conflict and arguing. And it, I think that was one of those, we all have them. The, the great tofu incident is a, is a talking point that I talk about with a lot of my students uh, when I see them being really frustrated or uh, I talk about, you know, just, just in general and I remember, um, which is when conflict is in your face and or that you're gonna act differently and then having a plan for it is really helpful. And it all boils down to like, you know, 15 years later, this idea of how can we be compassionate in the face of conflict, right? And I think that's something we've talked about a ton is that when someone says something to you, whether you're prepared for it or not, in that moment when your fight or flight response takes off, how do we deal with that? Whether it's like a new client that's questioning your rates or your value, um, which hopefully doesn't happen to you guys that much, um, but it does, or uh, you questioning your value proposition in your studio, or maybe, you know, being upset with you for moving to a new place, or, you, you know, you, you get the gist. But I wanted to just kind of start the conversation about if you guys have any experience or if you have any tricks um, or how you manage that, maybe share something. Does anybody want to lead us off? Lenny, you've probably done a bazillion things regarding that. Hey everyone, yeah, for me, I think we talked about this last week, it's, it's compassion. Um, it's remembering that that person um, is a real person and you've probably been in the same situation they're in where you're you know, over, overthinking something or overreacting or feeling the pressure or whatever. So um, for me, if it's conflict you know, to do with people, then I just have to step back and say, you know what, they're a person and they have a family and you know, they want the same things that I want. So you know, um, sometimes you gotta give people space, sometimes you gotta you know, um, give them a little perspective, like, like you were just, you know, mentioning with your talking points to your students. Um, so that, that's kind of my magic button is, you know, compassion. So that's, that's pretty much the only thing that gets me through those storms when someone else kind of derails, you know, an interaction and, and what can you do? It's just step back and remember, you know, the compassion aspect of it. Yeah, and compassion and then safety, right? There's also that, like there comes a point when then it's like, oh, now I just have to, I have to flee. Like this isn't, this isn't, this isn't going to go anywhere. I think that, and it's also, you know, that's something I try to remember too, is at what point can I, can I be, can I listen? Which I think is always the first, you know, when you, when you get blindsided with something like this, which um, I mean, maybe I should share, you know, in, in the other side of my life, which is basically running a technology company, there is a very um, popular concept called radical candor, and there's a book about it, right? That is sometimes taken to a level that's a little bit extreme, right? And can really feel like conflict when you're just trying to uh, solve a problem. Like the, the co-founder of FOMS is a pre precise example of that. He's one of my best friends, but he's he practices radical candor. Like, you know, it is facts first and feeling second and, um, which is actually a great mix for, for how I express myself. And I've really learned a lot from it about actually how important it is to be able to be honest with somebody, right? And like it, saying something that, that you need, that needs to be said, even if it can cause conflict that you're, that you're causing still makes it important to be said at the end of the day. One of my, um, one of my mentors, which is something I, I am going to circle back to every week is that mentors, at multiple age levels are the most amazing investment that you can make. Making friends with people that are in every decade of their life uh, is such an investment and they're just friends that you help, they help. But one of my, one of my great mentors uh, is a fabulous musician um, and he's about 10 years older than me, but he will sometimes call and he goes, you know, Brandon, he, I know it's gonna be a hard conversation. He goes, you know, Eric, this is, we're really good friends, right? And I'm like, oh no, here it comes. Yeah. And he goes, you know, cause if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't have this conversation with you. And it is something that I have, you know, over the years and the 10 or 12 phone calls or conversations where he's taking me out and said, you know, we're really good buddies, right? You're like, oh man, he's gonna give it to me, isn't he? And he does, and I am so grateful for it. Um, and now I'm in a place where I feel like I can really take that. Uh, and ho hopefully you have friends like that that can say, uh, you know, we're really good friends, right? Like, if you don't want to hear this, I'm not going to say it to you. But you know, we're re we're really good friends. Um, that's something that I think is a is a great takeaway. Uh, Steve, do you have something you want to share? Yeah, I've got. Well, I've got. I could 
could go on for, for a long time about this. Uh, just, yeah, dealing professionally and personally, you know, family issues. And, you know, we're dealing with other musicians and clients and all that. But a huge part of it is we just have to let go of having to, like, we've got to be right and we're not to blame and don't criticize us. Because when you dig in like that, it turns into, like, internet comments, you know. And, you know, people are just fighting about being right and we don't get no one gets anywhere because nobody's listening. So, so much about like you're talking about listening, um, empathy, you know, understanding other people's perspectives and their desires, whether or not you agree, like really um, understanding that. I'll send a link. I read this book recently that just, it's by this hostage negotiator, Chris Voss, never split the difference negotiating as if your life depended on it. What? And it was freaking life changing about, he would tell some war story about a bank heist or a, on the phone with a kidnapper overseas and diffuse some crazy situation and then distill elements out of it to use if you're trying to get your kids to go to bed or buying a car and like under and it's all this you know underlying psychological things and it's really interesting just one little bit i'll tell you from that the difference when you're talking to someone um the difference between you're right versus that's right so if i'm talking to eric and i'm getting and he's like okay you're right you're right when you say you're right that means please shut up like i don't you know we're done okay mom you're right you're right you're right like i want this conversation to be over but if you say something that really resonates with the person like you have a client who's difficult it's like wow it sounds like you really want the most meaningful experience for your kids like that's right you know something that really resonates it like opens up this whole conversation when people really feel like they've been heard and you understand where they're coming from and then kind of have the conversation from that angle rather than just digging in, you know, if it's a conversation about rates or something, really understanding where they're coming from rather than like, well, this is how it is and how it's been and how I do it. And um, yeah, it's so much the yeah emotional angle of it tied in with everything else. And, and you're saying like, as an example, like that's right and you're right is a marked difference in how it's received? Oh, a absolutely. Absolutely. That that's right. It's like that's it. it's like someone's like, I've been heard, this person understands me, they get it. And then you you go on with whatever whatever you're working on from there, you know, whether it's a negotiation or just, you know, you're having a conversation with someone. Gotta read this book. You gotta post it. Cause I would have assumed that you're right would assume like you're like, I'm hearing you and you're right, but that's right's more of like a mutual like, oh I, I hear what you're saying, that's right. Yeah, this this person under, understands it. yeah, I'll um the, the audio books, I've gone through it a couple times, and this has just saved me. I've had, um, oh, the, the other piece on this is, if there's some people that are always conflict and there's always some like toxic energy and you're always butting heads, you know, I'm being, um, being strategic about who I'm spending my time around. And if there's certain things where it's always conflict, always conflict, um, sometimes it's just not the best situation professionally. Um, but so there's certain things like if it's a family member, you know, or someone, a coworker, you'll have to, you know, deal with the situation. And yeah, the concepts in this book, and it's, yeah, not just about, you know, negotiating a deal or something, but for, yeah, this thing has just freaking saved me <laughs> so many times for dealing with challenging situations, for sure, in a way where everyone feels good about it after. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah, you got to post that. I think <laughs> I think everybody here is, is interested. Thanks, Steve, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Len Lenny, did you want to piggyback off that real quick? Yeah, it really touched on something that's so important which is language and I can't even think of a day in my career that I wasn't developing my trainers or my security guards or my managers to really put a lot of thought into the words that they were using because depending on which words you use you're sending a completely different message so for security training like for the House of Blues concerts or maybe for like nightclub in a hotel you know the Bellagio or something we had what we call verbal judo which was basically just a way to approach someone and get that de-escalation with every every back and forth of the conversation was going in the in the in the direction that you wanted it to go and it's hard to do sometimes you have to you know really choose your words and your tone and everything but you know like with the train the trainer it's always about dealing with difficult trainees and so you know how do you deal with the talker the attitude the know-it-all um you know and a lot of it comes down to um you know just the language asking questions um, over, you know, picking up on the signs when people are overwhelmed or they're frustrated. Um, so, you know, language is such a huge thing and there's so many great resources. Um, but if you find that you're not, people aren't perceiving you the way that you're putting yourself out there, um, you should take a little time and, 
and dive into the language aspect of it because you know like one example would be you know if you're fighting with your your roommate or your you know wife or whatever if you say you are this that's different than you know if you say something like you're doing this or you're acting this way right so you know we can all relate to how uh flammable you know the wrong word at the wrong time can be and so just understanding you know how to get the response that you're looking for and to put yourself out there in an authentic way so that people don't take you you know in a way that that's not what you're intended so but that's just a, such a great point that i wanted to tag on that that steve touched on yes. yeah just yeah, i was just gonna say on that the the language thing and that's where eric i hadn't heard that term for extreme candor is that what it's called yeah, I'll post that book. It's a good, yeah. yeah. At least what I understand from this thing. That the book's called Radical to, Candor. Radical can, radical Candor. If you're talking to someone who's open to that, like a like an Eric, but I could just see, based on what I understand, that can just completely backfire when you just say, here's what I'm, and just kind of dump everything, everything that you're feeling just right right out there. Um, might not get the ultimate outcome you're, you're looking you're looking for, and so depending on who you're dealing with. That could just be explosive. <laughs> so... Yeah, so um, I think you were talking to me. We need Steve 1, Steve 2, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> um, so taking a step back, collecting your thoughts, um, I know it's, it's a simple idea, but when do we do that consistently? Um, I'm a, you know, I know a lot of us are thinkers um, because that's what we do. We, 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 also, we are always th thinking about like the next step. We're always thinking about you know, in, in terms of our business and a, a lot of times in our lives that, that transfers. Um, so it's, it's interesting. you mentioned the kind of the flammability of, of conversations because, um, the, the, when you speak before you think that whole idea is, you know, sometimes you don't say what you mean. And so the word choice is so important, but what I wanted to mention, the first thought I had when I saw Eric's post was, uh, social media and our relationships with professionals because um, there are there's so many personalities out there and we're working with them but we're also like in isolation so we're in this kind of weird spot as teachers where we have our family of students and it's even more heightened when you do this online because you're even more isolated you can't really connect with them physically um, but I'm thinking about how I try, how I work with other professionals and I sometimes kind of lose that train of thought and just kind of speak my mind. And I want to be blunt with people because I want to be like, what are you talking about? But then I have to take a step back and realize that this is not the proper word choice. Let me think about it. And then sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You sometimes, you have to do the whole unfollow mentality or i'm just going to kind of think about i'm just going to just ignore it not worry about it and and continue on with uh you know if, if you're in a debate of some sort in on facebook or whatever but that was the first thing that popped up in my mind because there's a lot of anxiety that's created in social media and we're on it a lot because that's how we connect um and i also find that it's interesting how some people perceive each other as friends, like how close friends we are, even though we've never met each other. So for some people, they think that, that, okay, we're kind of close friends because we talk on social media a lot. So that allows me to, to be able to uh, judge a little bit or to be able to give my opinion, a strong opinion about what you're saying or how you're doing things. And uh, it's just interesting. That's pretty much all I had to say on it, but it, um, you know, Steve, that's, I think that's an entire, con that's a two hour, Right. Chat, because as soon as you said, I was like, oh my gosh, of course, like we're connected. We have all this stuff in common. We've never met in real life. Um, we, uh, we feel brave under, you know, when we're often on the keyboard uh, in a way that otherwise we would have maybe shown more sensitivity or compassion when we're typing something than and typing something up than we would over a coffee. Uh, that is an amazing, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a sticky note on my laptop that says Branner. <laughs> you're online be quiet think about it first that's a it's it's a beautiful idea man because i think it resonates with me a lot too i'm sure it does with all of us because we're all we're all pretty savvy in the in, in the world of the internet um thank you for sharing that 
Uh, hey, Corey, are you, how are you doing over there? We haven't, I just, I know we, we're nearly out of time. This conversation has been awesome and I, I don't think we've heard a lot out of you today. How are you doing? I'm, <clears throat> I'm hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, you are. Just, you know, trying to get through, waiting. I'm just, I feel like my life right now is sort of like just hanging in wait or whatever that phrase is. Um, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I have another hearing coming up on February 11th. Yeah. Take on new students or change too much right now. I feel like maybe I can, I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> um, and I just lots, lots of drama in the background and I'm trying to just muddle through it is positively as I can. <laughs> oh, I know you are. And I know that, you know, I, I hope that your year of transition starts very shortly. Yes. <laughs> right. And then you can be patient for that year until you feel settled. Um, yeah. And it's already been a year of transition, you know, since I moved out of my home and everything. And, you know, nobody's, I have three kids and none of them are settled. And uh, there's going to be another year of non-settled. I don't know. I'm just, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> it's not point of, settling but and letting the calculus of life simplify a little bit into maybe some algebra or something <laughs> yeah god well sending you great vibes i think about okay. you a lot and i know i know you're going through a ton and holding a lot together so i'm glad you're here i am too i'm glad i was able to make it actually my i'm in my bedroom today because my son is on the couch watching ninjago because he's homesick <laughs> oh no great wow um well, hey, we, we have a little bit of time left, um, and I just wanted to kind of open up. I think this conversation was awesome. Was there anything that anybody else had today in our that, that may, they might want to share, or after the conversation, they kind of maybe resonated with them, or um, maybe some ideas for a future conversation? I have a, I have a lot of, of ideas that have come up from today, but is there anybody, you know, Josh, did you want to share something? Or, dude, you're yeah. a good writer. Oh, well, thanks, man. <laughs> Sneaky marketing guy. Yeah, nice. How are you? Good, 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 man. I've been to take, you guys are dropping all kind of gold nuggets. I've already got a whole page of notes right here. So <laughs> it's been great so far. And I was just thinking, you know, when, as far as conflict resolution, um, some of it kind of comes naturally to me because I have two siblings. I have an older sister and a younger sister. So I'm kind of stuck in between there growing up, trying to like listen to both sides and figure stuff out. But uh, I think you guys have hit everything we're square on the head as far as listening and so my personality uh in a good way i want to hear everything before i make a decision or understand what i'm doing before i make a decision and that can hinder me in my business too sometimes because i'm like well you don't have to know everything you just got to get going take action you know but uh when it comes to conflict i was thinking i wrote this down because i listened to a podcast uh, uh the other day um, and i can't take credit for it but there's an online marketer named russell brunson and he does a, uh, a podcast and he was just talking about Kind of what separates him from some other folks um, when it comes to marketing is when he encounters a problem, uh, he doesn't really get frustrated as much as he gets curious. Like, why is it not working? You know, and I think that uh, that kind of plays into a lot of areas of life, but especially in conflict too. It's really easy to get frustrated with someone if you're talking and they're not hearing you or they're hearing you, but they're not listening, you know. Um, but instead of just getting frustrated, just get curious. And that's kind of where the D and and what Lenny was talking about, um, kind of showing grace and listening to where they're coming from, uh, really helps you out because you need to just get curious, act, figure out what you know where they're coming from and that kind of thing. So, talking about action steps on what to do, maybe if you can just chime in and just try to get curious instead of frustrated, that that might be really helpful. Could could you share that um, podcast? Is that one you love? What's it called? I don't know that one. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Marketing Secrets by Russell Brunson. Yeah, I'll try to grab it and post it real quick. Oh, cool. I'll, I'll write it down. These are all great things to share afterwards. You know, and if, if you guys do, I, I saw that, um, Stephen, you put your, your Facebook page up there. If you guys have projects you're working on, please please post them so we can share them because um, we'd love to take a look at what you're doing and um, definitely sign up for Steve's mailing list. Oh, uh, Jana, I see you have the Pianosaur there. Awesome. Andrea, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so one is a resource that helped me because sometimes we're in the wrong, you know, like it's not just a, a policy questions. I think that's where a lot of conflict comes or sometimes, or maybe we're not actually doing something wrong, but the person feels wrong. I had a situation where a piano student, uh, not a great student, 
like one of my worst students um, was this was like eight years ago. Um, I got a really nasty email from her mom, and because she was stressed out about the recital, and I knew this student would be stressed out about the recital. So six months earlier, we picked her song, we had mapped out week by week, you're going to do this, like right, and this week, and you know, broke it down because I knew this was going to happen in December when the recital came. So, um, so the mom emailed two weeks before saying she was stressed out and how can they quit lessons at my studio and. The first thing I try to do in that situation is like get them on the phone because, like, like you said, we're really raised behind our keyboards, and then we get in person and we're like, oh, it's a human I'm talking to, and all of a sudden, like, it's, you know, a little more those reality. Um, but in responding to, I couldn't get mom to talk on phone with me, so I had to send her an email to respond. But um, in the process of that, I came across she heard the five love languages. Has anyone heard of that book? So it's a book that describes like how different people feel loved, and you might feel loved by um, receiving gifts, or by someone doing acts of kindness for you, or physical touch, or like there's just different ways that you feel loved. And the same author, Gary Chapman, has written um, or has I don't even know if it's a book or just I found it online, but five apology languages. And so there are different ways people here feel heard. Um, and apologize. So they're like, if you hear the words, I was wrong. Like, to some people, that's what they need to hear to feel like you've apologized. Some people need to hear um, a request for forgiveness. Like, will you forgive me? Some people just need to hear, I'll never do that again. Um, hmm. So it's interesting. And I know, like, between my husband and I, we have different things we need to hear when we're reconciling in an argument. Um, so the five apology languages is, is an interesting thing, and I'll try to find some the five things online. Is it a different book, the five languages of love and the five languages of apology? Or are they all on the same thing? I don't know if there's actually an apology book, or if it's just like I saw it as a blog post. Eight years ago. Got and it. So um, I will look for it so I can drop it there. Oh, that'd be killer. And then do I have like another minute? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. It's cool. There's a webinar that I do that's kind of on this topic of handling and help with music teachers guide some conversations. So when someone's um, challenging your policy or you know, you may have it all written out and they say, Well, or maybe you're making a switch to online lessons instead of um, in person lessons. And I'm I'm really an engineer just <laughs> pretending to be a music teacher. So I have frameworks for all these things. But the four topics that I go through in one of these conversations is um, to acknowledge, like if someone says, well, I don't think I should pay for that lesson because we're going to miss it, we're going to be out of town. And say, oh, I can understand why you wouldn't want to pay for it. I acknowledge it. Um, the next step is to probe. And this actually comes from sales, so I, I didn't invent this, but probing like um I'm fine you're going on vacation you think you'll have an opportunity or where are you going you know asking more questions that kind of get to the heart of why um, what they're what they don't like about policy or that you know they have to be for their love then um so acknowledge probe answer so answering is like responding to what they their initial concern you might say oh um you know you're going to be traveling but susie's going to be at her grandma's and one thing i offer if you can't take an in-person lesson it's an online lesson you don't even need to have a piano with you we can do a theory lesson or i can send you know, like having these offers of things that fit within your what you've decided is reasonable as a music teacher. Um, and then finally, so acknowledge, probe, answer, close. That's the, does that sound like reasonable solution to you? Or does that make sense? And getting, uh, I try to ask a question that they can respond yes to. Oh, say that again. You ask a question that they can respond yes to. Does that sound good? Yeah, I found that if you have thought 
through them in advance, like what are the most common objections to um, whatever it is, like the date of the recital or the who made the blessing policy or whatever it is that if you've thought through them in advance, you can easily respond to that. Caring, but also reasonable way. And that's awesome. I'd love to hear more about that. I like that a lot. I wrote that down and I'm going to, I'll follow up with you on that, Andrea. That's killer. Good plan. Lenny, Lenny, did, did you want to share something really quick? Yeah, everyone's really uh, getting my wheels turning listening to all you guys. So <laughs> uh, the simple reality is that every single one of us wants to be seen and we want to be heard. I mean, it's just in our core. Um, nobody wants to be you know, um, overlooked or to be ignored, you know, so you have to use that to your advantage, you know, when you're in a position of you're the, you're the business and you're dealing with a customer or you're the teacher and you're dealing with a student. Um, so it's not that hard to, to manipulate people really. I mean, say something like, um, how's your day going or how you feeling? And you can just, people are all dying for someone to ask that question and just have a chance to open up. So if you can apply that into a specific scenario, um, kind of get into what uh, Andrea was saying, you know, solicit their opinion, let them talk about themselves. Everyone wants to talk about themselves. You know, it's just a fact. So if you're willing to able to kind of use people's momentum and their energy and their emotion in that kind of a way where you can kind of harness it, but let them, let them um, express themselves and, and, and then you just have to play poker, you know, and not react to everything they're saying. Um, the most powerful thing that I've ever been able to do um, as a teacher is to self let people self-evaluate, you know. Yeah. And whenever somebody does something, the first thing I always say is, how do you think it went? Or how was that? And, you know, nine times out of ten, they already know if they made a mistake and they don't need me um, to beat them up over it. Um, but if they don't know what they did wrong, then we have a bigger issue, right? Um, or if they did it perfectly and they're, they're, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I screwed it up, then you're kind of now digging into a confidence issue. So, you know, just getting people talking, letting them talk about themselves, letting them share their opinions, and then just kind of playing poker with the information that you're getting and holding your cards, um, I, I think it's just such an important part of um, winning in these interactions and these conversations and situations that you guys were talking about. Well, thank you, Lenny. That's awesome. Um, wow, I'm looking at this chat. This is an amazing list of stuff to check out. Uh, everybody, I think we're out of time for today. I am so grateful that you all showed up. This was an amazing conversation um, and what a, what a great crew. Thank you to all of you for, for being here. Um, and I hope we can do it again. Uh, I'm going to get this posted as soon as I can. And I'm going to take this list of, of stuff we came up with to share too. I'm going to order this book, Steve. I can't wait to, to read this. Oh, I see there's the, there's the apology languages. Nice. Andrew. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys. I hope you guys have all a great day, um, and great weeks. And I hope to see you again soon. And thank you for being here.